One of the aspects that I wanted to improve upon was the occlusion of the sockets and that determining whether or not the labels were visible on the HUD. You see, because here, this is fine, it's on this side, the wheel socket is about here, but for number four, it's actually on the other side of the board. So from a usability and user point of view, that's a bit confusing. So I wondered how I could approach that. I achieved that by setting up a line trace by channel running from my cine camera pawn to each of the sockets on the product static mesh. So if we look at my skateboard you can see that there are four sockets that I've positioned. So the labels fade up. If I rotate the mesh away from us you'll see that number one disappeared, number four is still visible and then it switches over and then here on this wheel that comes around at the bottom it appears again and then I'll add a fade down and fade up so let's have a look at what is going on here in our cine camera actor pawn blueprint I am as mentioned before running a line trace by channel from the camera position get actor location self which is our start, to our socket location for each of the sockets from our static mesh. Okay, So it's a for each loop. Because I'm relying on an array from all the socket names, therefore only running for how many sockets there are. One mesh has 15 sockets, or one mesh has three sockets. This code will always work when I swap the static mesh here assuming I've set up the sockets on the mesh. So I'm running a line trace. So if I actually put on the debug and do that again, you'll see that we have got the line trace is running, coming from the center here and then hitting. I've not done that on tick. I've done that on a set timer by event and it's obviously a looping event. So what's the condition that I'm checking against to determine whether it is true or false? So having taken our two distances, I'm basically saying if our hit location is less than our distance from the camera to the socket location, then something is in front of the socket. And therefore that determines whether or not the condition is true or false. And if that condition is true, then based on the array index, because I know I've only got the same number of labels on screen in the same order as the sockets, because I use the socket array to generate these legend slots. And then I just set their visibility to hidden or visible. One thing you'll note is that under trace channel, I have got focus, an additional trace channel to the standard camera and visibility channels. You can come and add your own trace channels by coming to project settings. And then you'll see here under trace channels, you can have up to 18 custom channels which gives you a way of controlling which objects interact with a particular trace. So you don't have to rely solely on the default ones. Now, a couple of other things. If we look at our actor and we look at our product, you'll see that on collision, the only one that doesn't need to be there the only one that is blocking is the focus channel. So on the skateboard product static mesh component, because I swap out the static mesh associated with that, I'm using the focus trace channel only. Um, one prerequisite with that also is that your object needs to have collision as well. So obviously my trace is colliding with complex trace. So it gives us an accurate 
return as to whether or not the line trace is hitting the collision, the complex collision. If I had simple, it wouldn't give us accurate behavior and uh, might seem a bit strange. That's the kind of core of what is going on there. So I hope that video is of use. If so, please do like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive any updates. And thank you for your support.